Are we recording? Oh, Jesus Christ, is this game. Oh, my God. <sighs> really, really. I'm just coming off from, like, uh, taking a break from, like, an hour stream that I was just looking at this game. And the Equity Hawks, very embarrassing performance coming from, you know, uh, a team that, you know, they, they just don't know how to match up or even play against an elite team and that's one thing that i've mentioned and that's one thing i just keep mentioning even i've made a post talking about this they lost against inter club i know uh there was a lot of you know uh people coming after me after they won that game yesterday i was like yeah you know yeah we won this game there, there was a lot of chopping there they're saying oh where aren't you posting now look at this look at this result right now those people who were defending this team uh, yesterday when they won, where are they now? Where are they now? Where, <laughs> where are they now, man? I, I'm always here. I'm gonna post wherever. If it's a win or a loss, even if you get beat, get beat by 40 or 50, I'll still I'll still show the results and I'll still turn up and talk about the game. But honestly, this was a quit game. Uh, the Equity Hawks. This was a quit game on their side, and it's actually quite pathetic. Um, my God, even if you. I even talked about this even when I was doing the live stream, looking at even like the live starts as they progressed. And right now you can even see like, it's just pathetic of shooting from the three is something that we can't do. Uh, finishing inside something that has been taken away. And this is not even a three point shooting team. Unfortunately, the equity Hawks are not a three point shooting team. They can't shoot. They cannot even... Uh, have a player that is reliable to hit that shot because my god if you open the box score you're going to be very surprised to see <laughs> the type of percentages that some players in the roster are shooting and fu and funny enough these are players who play for the national team very embarrassing that these are the players that <laughs> team kenya goes to for 3x3 and 5x5 my god this is the production that they produce here Ah, it's 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 pathetic. There was only one lead change in this game. It happened in the first quarter, as you can see on the screen. It only happened here, midway in the first. After that, it has just been a regress. It was just a regression. I just saw the the RG team just pull away, and they were just scoring in bunches, and they did not even lift their foot off the gas, and they just kept scoring and scoring. At that point in the fourth quarter. Somewhat they felt pity for the Equity Hawks. They would have even gone to 100, but they felt pity for the Equity Hawks and, you know, decided to, like, you know, uh, have an easy game. Because if you look at this plateau right here, there was a point in the fourth quarter where the Equity Hawks could not hit nothing. Couldn't hit anything. They couldn't even, you know, uh, buy a bucket to save their lives. And even it tells you, even the other key stars just tell you everything that you need to know. I saw the coach in a previous interview saying they want to limit turnovers. Well, they, they did limit turnovers, but, you know, there was nothing that it yielded nothing, especially in matching up against an elite team. And the funny thing that I see is, why is it that they're not even checking? Did they even look at the Interclub versus REG game yesterday and saw how competitive it was? They just thought, they just got carried away. I feel like the Equity Hawks got carried away with that win that they beat the Aspark team, a very weak team. And even covered it in a video talking about, like, this is not a team that, you know, you you, you celebrate after you have beat them because, number one, they, they, they don't prove anything. And, then, and they don't even erase the inter-club loss. So as much as you try to celebrate that win, it doesn't mean anything because uh, you, you can't beat... You can't just beat that team and just say, you know, everything is back to normal. No. You you met a, a team that couldn't play defense, and that's when you these players had elite performances. That's why you're seeing a couple of players scoring 20 points or more. Then when the Equity Hawks match up against an, a, a team that can play actual defense and offense, this is the result that you get. You can see that they can't even score points in the paint. They can't even, you know, the... the they are turnover machines. <laughs> I mean, look at RG. RG had eight turnovers the whole game. They took care of the ball very well, and they knew what shots they needed to take. And that's the reason as to why their field goal percentage is this good, and their three-point percentage is as good. And even on the line, they got sent to the line more times than us, <laughs> than the Equity Hawks. And you could see, like, even given this percentage, you can see it's a low, it's a lower one. But if you look at the amount of times that they went to the line, 
you could see they were able to convert. And the one thing that amazes me is this this equity Hawks team, they feel like they think that being physical and drawing fouls is defense. That's not defense. That's actually like low basketball IQ. I'm not sure what the coach tells them, but honestly, it was just pathetic. And here, let's look at the usual suspects. I mean, there are players here who, my God, <laughs> I was watching this live. I was just looking at the live stats when these numbers were changing, and my God, you could just see the plus minus the negative net plus minus for the players just keep forming and look at malu grace she played 30 minutes 20 20 points she's the only player that scored double digits and she was the most inefficient but i i can say that she had a double double game because no the offense was coming from nobody nobody could hit anything even Looking at even her percentages, 9 of 22 shots. She shot 22 times because there was no production coming from any other person. Look at Betty, 22 minutes played, 8 points, 3 of 10 shooting, you know, 1 of 2 from 2 point field goals, 2 of 8. This was the this was the funny start, man. Like, 2 of 8. They, she was just throwing, she was like, you know, um, she was just, it was just Brick City for her. And also Brick City was Melissa Otieno. I mean, oh, that's so sad. Like, she only hit one three and one field goal. And it's only five points. Coming from a game that she had 21 points. You can see, this is a play, these are players that can't play against an elite team. These are players that have shown that they can't beat elite offense or defense. When they match up against a team that can actually play offense and defense and they're guarded heavily, this is the result that you get. You get players that can't score anything. She shot one of eleven from the field, <laughs> I, and and also two two from the line. So, I mean, it's it's um, it's sad, man. Like I I just look at this. It's not even it's it's not even funny anymore. Like you can, you can see Betty. She had seven rebounds, one assist, five turnovers. Actually, she 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 led <laughs> she led the team in five turnovers. <laughs> And uh, Mary Lisa, she led the lead, she led the team in personal fouls. She played 11 minutes and did absolutely nothing. She was just a turnover machine. <laughs> Three turnovers, five personal fouls, one assist. In the previous game that they won by a, lo a lot of points, uh, she only scored one point. So I don't even know where her value is on the team. Debbie played 27 minutes. She could not hit anything. She was all. Uh, <laughs> She could she she was all over the place. She couldn't hit anything at all. Uh four rebounds, three assists, two turnovers. Like nothing, man. Like but <laughs> we'll take the four rebounds and three assists any day. But her production scoring wise, given like the heavy minutes that she was playing, well, I must say really had the team and knowing for a fact that she can't hit the three consistently. Okay, we have people who can hit the three but not consistently. You hitting 2 of 8 is not consistent. You hitting 1 of 10 is not consistent. Or 2 of 8. You've got Judith, 2 of 8 from deep, 1 of 4 from 2 point field goals. I mean, 3 of 12, man. 2 of 6. You have players, Christina Kinney, 0 for 8. She couldn't do nothing. 18 minutes play. You're getting players who are playing heavy minutes and have zero production against an elite defense and a team that has both has both elite defense and offense and this is the type of production you're providing no wonder they are losing like there's, there's nothing that they can do right now to like even save anything so honestly i mean the, this this is a team that is down bad i mean they're just down bad i don't think that they can they can recover from this i don't think that they have what it takes to be able to like even they said that they wanted a podium finish. I don't think they can get a podium finish with this performance. Against an elite team, okay. Let's say, for example, they don't meet, by God's grace, they don't meet Interclub or Arigi. What will you do when they meet A Sporting? A Sporting beat a team brutally yesterday. And it was just a no contest. Like, in the half, it was like 57-13, if I'm not wrong. And they were not showing any mercy, and they were just hammering teams left and right. So... Let's say, for example, uh, the Equity Hawks meet um, the a sporting team. Let's say in the in, in the in the knockout stages, even if they finish number three, you're just gonna you're just gonna be an early exit. 
and it's unfortunate that these players are gonna get paid because <laughs> you can't get paid when you're and you're just playing every minutes and have zero production like this. I know basketball is not is all about you know uh, making sure that you have uh, more points than the opponent. But my God, you cannot just say that you can just you know collect rebounds like that. I would rebound the whole other team and not even convert on the points. So I mean, uh, the, the, this coach has this work cut out for him because my God, this is so pathetic. It is beyond disgraceful. It's embarrassing to the country. And I'm not, I don't even know why these people even get call-ups to the national team. Some of the players have played in 3x3 and 5x5. They have zero production. They keep saying 3x3. They keep, I've, I've seen a couple of situations where some players keep defending themselves. They say, you know, team basketball, is, uh, national team basketball is different from club basketball. If this is the production you're giving in club basketball, what about like when you get put in a national team? So it's very straight up embarrassing. I, I even predicted this performance and looks like the equity Hawks have never learned anything from even the time they met RG in the semis in zone five. They learned absolutely, they absorbed absolutely nothing. The coach has zero scouting report. I feel like this coach should be fired, honestly. You cannot play like this two times and get beat two times like this by, by, uh, by a team that by interclub and reg like this this is this is beyond unacceptable and honestly this coach should just lose his job <laughs> if i was the general manager of this team i would have just have fired the coach immediately even before even they fly back <laughs> if I, the, the team will play coachless because this is straight up embarrassing i thought the interclub game was bad but this one Man, I mean, you get getting stomped on like that is just pathetic. Look at even the REG team, like how they just gelled on pretty well. You had four players scoring north of ten points or more. I can even yeah, ten points or more. So and you can even see Tiffany Mich Michelle. Nobody could be able to like defend, and she played the whole virtually the whole game. She only rested for four minutes. She was actually quite efficient from all the from all the facets of the game, and. She was shy, one assist shy from a triple double, something that the Equity Hawks defense were not ready for, unfortunately. If she got one assist, she would have gotten a triple, she would have averaged a triple double in this game. And yeah, that's just about it. I mean, this is a team that uh, is, a, is a failure. I don't know why uh, people still believe in this team. This team had a target of a podium finish when they did their opening press conference. I don't think that there'll just be an early exit. That is if they win their last game, which, my God, given like the way they have played in, against REG, losing by this much, I mean, this is straight up pathetic. The way they just started the game, it's like, in the first half, it's like they already quit. Even in the first quarter, it's like they quit. In the second quarter, they quit completely. I mean, there's no, they've lost every single quarter. There's no quarter that they have won. And these are still players that... <laughs> So, and, and I don't know, like when they won, when when they won yesterday, you could see Betty, she was just, you know, on the charts, on, on one of my posts, just, you know, commenting, where is she now? Hmm? Where is she now? She has the second negative, she has the ne second negative net minus, net plus minus for minus 24. Like, this is a player that is in any professional team. None of these players can even make the cut, honestly. <laughs> they will not even get any playing time honestly this is straight up pathetic look at all this minus 23 minus 11 minus 8 minus 13 minus 25 minus 24 minus 20 none of these players will get even uh, even minutes in an elite team and that's the reason as to why they can't get any other offers they can't be called they can't get an offer to play for another team based on this performance alone any club in Africa cannot look at any of these players and get them given a contract. So that's actually the brutal truth at this point. So yeah, man, I don't know how they can, can bounce back from this because if they meet like an elite team, this is the performance that they, you will get. I don't think that they can beat an elite team. The stats, uh, the stats back me up. The stats show that they can't do it. And I don't think they can. In, in, in the, in the, in, right now, even in the near future. They say, the coach, I believe, he said they are building this team for the future. She, he keeps citing the inexperienced excuse. Chris Nakini played for... Chris Nakini played in the Team Lioness national team. Who else? She, Judith played in the 3x3 in Doha, Qatar. We also covered on this channel. 
uh, Malu Grace. She has she has been there, done that. She has played. I know uh, she's played out of the country. She was hired for this job. Betty Kanano played for the national team. She has played for the equity for the longest time. Melissa played for the 3x3. Melissa Otieno played for 3x3 in Birmingham, and she played for the national team as well. Marianne has played 3x3 basketball for like three stints. She played in the Hammamet Games. She played in the Nations League in Algeria, and she also played in po- in Lublin, Poland. So you can see this is the type of performance they are dropping. So they have to like these people are just weak. They just have to step up because you cannot cite inexperience when you have all these players that have played at some capacity in in some level in the national team and they've also played and have, have have adequate experience to be able to know like what they're supposed to do. So nobody can come and lie to me here and say that oh there's an inexperience. These players have traveled outside the continent and been able and been able to have an opportunity to travel and play. So they can't come out and cite inexperience. That will be a lie. And anyone who's citing inexperience, they are lying to you. So, man, I mean, this is such an embarrassing performance. There's no words that can be able to describe what a capitulation performance this was. And, um, yeah, I mean, all those people who are yucking their mouths, you know, yesterday after they won, where are they now? Where can they post the results? Yeah, KBF, I'm talking about you. You can't even post the results when they lose. Yeah, you're quick to post when they win, but you're not quick to post when they lose. Why? You're hypocrites, all of you people. I'm not afraid to say that because that's the truth, man. Where are you when they lose? You're only there when they win. Yeah, You guys come at me a lot when you say that, oh, where is he now? He's not even posting when he lose. My God, I'm going to keep posting regardless of whether we win or lose. I will keep posting and I'll keep telling you people what the flaws that you have. Even looking at the game, honestly... Ariji felt pity. They would have hit easily hit a hundred, but they just said, "You know what? We don't want to embarrass you further. <laughs> we come from East Africa. Where you, the, the thing is, it will be much more embarrassing. And this one should be a. Uh, I can use this one as a way to tell these other teams that get beat by Equity. Don't ever feel bad you being blown out by Equity here in KBF, right? Because." They will meet their match here and they'll lose the same way that you lost. So don't feel bad. Yeah, they'll they watangara na nyinyi uko KBF. Lakini lete mwana patana na team zingine uzkomoto. Zina walima. So, hakuna skill hapo. The, the KBF is very weak. It has enabled these people to be complacent and they think that they'll always win every single time. And uh, there's a reason as to why they got swept by the Zitex Sparks. There's a reason as to why they finished third in the in zone five, and there's a reason as to why they are losing against Inter Club and Arig in this manner. So, and also Arig beat them in this in the semi. So, it is what it is, man. So, <laughs> I mean, these people are crap, trash. I mean, even trash is an understatement. They're beneath trash, man. So, um, yeah, I mean, man, I'm out. I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything else because there's nothing more to add.